how are we today? So welcome to your Monday lesson uh, for English literature, uh, which we'd usually have first thing on a Monday morning, missing you all, um, but let's go. So I asked you to have a look at the laughing song for me. Um, as part of your homework or at least just to prepare for this next session so if you haven't done that and you haven't given it a read and considered some of the initial ideas you might want to pause now just before we start so your first learning activity today is this on the board so what I want you to do is have a look at these three things so number one in one sentence can you summarize for me the motive behind the poetic voices invitation to come live and be merry and join with me Number two, which lexical choices, if you're remembering, lexical choices means your key word choices are repeated throughout. You might want to circle them through the poem, um, see which words are most sort of central to the idea and why maybe they dominate. Why do they run like a thread through the whole way through? Um, why might that be? And then because this is, again, a song of innocence, what awareness, what is lacking, what is absent what has been emitted from this poetic voices vision of the world so give it a pause 10 minutes off you go right hopefully you've had some ideas i'm going to give you my views on this poem now as a summary we're not going to spend too long on this one it's not one of our top 10 but it can certainly be used within any essay as an additional one so um, I've got all the ideas here so feel free to pause or to listen to me but as I've popped there the poetic voice here which again seems to be this childlike poetic voice um, they are inviting the reader to celebrate the life and joy that we find in nature in that pastoral world and then by extension in childhood so whilst this is a poem about nature and childhood um, the two are pretty much in symbiosis yeah they're mutually beneficial they kind of work together to communicate the same idea um, the poetic voice wants you or invites you to indulge in this real unself-conscious budding of sexuality so there's no self-consciousness there's no shame there's no fear inherent in this at all um, and it is that sort of budding of the beginning of that world um, however I asked you what is kind of missing or to start thinking about the ideas and it seems that the poetic voice is largely ignorant of the negative connotations of noun cherries um when we think of cherry for me i think of cherry blossoms and lots of critics have said the same and those cherry blossoms they remind us just how fleeting nature is we know that spring must come to an end that inevitably inevitably sorry that those blossoms must scatter and fall and confetti upon the floor and ultimately die and decay so if that's the case then the child is probably largely ignorant to the own, their own kind of inevitable movement away from innocence away from childhood um, and that movement into the world of experience okay they don't seem to be aware of their own mortality okay the second one there i've put for you um i honed in on these lexical items which were clearly repeated quite a lot merry sweet green laughing okay laugh or laughing either way it doesn't matter it's the same idea repeated um so those lecture choices all contribute to this lack of sophistication from the poetic voice okay whilst they are um sort of free or liberated in their vision of the world of in their vision of joy ecstasy and creative imagination um they have that inherent lack of awareness okay that that lack of range in their emotional world um there is also a real fixation for question three on the glory of nature um, and childhood but a failure to grasp its brevity how short-lived it is okay and that mortality death is inevitable it's around that corner okay it could be a not a literal death guys it could be the death of childhood okay something quite different um also guys popping your cherry okay i know it's very uh, a very modern metaphor but for us modern readers there is also uh, ignorance to the sexual erotic undertones um the pick cherry even you know hundreds of years ago was symbolic of a loss of virginity okay so we have that there as well you might want to pause here as well guys and just have a little nose at the accompanying illustration and make what you will um but this is a poem it's largely made up again of rhyming couplets 
again suggestive of the absolute completeness the neatness the simplicity of the poetic voices thoughts okay um all of this together okay we, we, again we've got this idea if i'm just going to sum it up we are invited to take part in the merriment that's exhibited here um about creation and children uh, and the fruitfulness of that world but again there is a lack there are omissions okay so hopefully you've got your stuff for that poem right i want you to pause again because right now we are going to move on to the nurse's song um from innocence and this is in my top 10 poems without a doubt so here's another activity for you please pause this i would like you to find a piece of evidence just a quote from that poem on page 74 um, that supports each of these views of the nurse so the nurse's guardian the nurse's carer the nurse's protector and the nurse's empathizer okay so pause now and grab a quote Okay, so I'm not going to check those quotations. I feel like there are a lot through there. Um, but in terms of this figure, the infamous nurse, well, she's infamous in the one from experience here. She's, she's just famous. Okay, she's largely a positive uh, figure. Um, so, I mean, let's look at that illustration. She stands next to the child. The child is at ease. Um, she seems to be forming some sort of shield around that child. So the idea of guardian protector is, is captured there. Um, the child is wearing, you know, a green and she's wearing a blue. Again, fairly naturalistic colours. Nature dominates in this illustration as well. Um, so I've put there the theme of guardianship and protection are personified here in the figure of the nurse. Okay, the emphasis is on childhood and it's on its innocence. And we know those are concepts that were adored by the Romantics and by Jean-Jacques Rousseau. Um, children must be allowed to roam free. They must be able to be free in nature's context. And the nurse in this poem largely facilitates that. That's a key word for you there. She largely facilitates that harmony that's seen between nature, between the children, between the older generation and the younger generation. Uh, her care doesn't seek to repress or oppress the children. Okay, she grants them freedom to play. So, I am not going to tell you everything straight away. I want you to do some independent analysis first. And I've got a task there for you. In pairs, oh, we can't do it, self-isolation. You get the idea. By yourself, you can talk to one of your friends on WhatsApp if you need some help. But look at those suggested points of analysis on the bullet points there. Okay, little hints. I call them little hints there about what we're dealing with um, in this poem. So go through now and start annotating your poem um, and see if you can find evidence of these aspects okay and, and how these aspects are presented so there's some hint there's some some help there at the bottom some context that you want to write down on your poem as well okay i'm not going to read it out to you but pause the pause the video now okay so what i want to do is highlight some stuff now in my reading of the poem and then you've got some questions that i want you to answer in your books as well so when the voices of children are heard on the green and laughing is heard on the hill my heart is at rest within my breast and everything else is still so immediately we have this evocation of the natural world on the green i put a little note in my one here that this is a direct link it's an intertextual link to the echoing green okay um so it doesn't seem actually in this poem that the poetic voice is a child it seems instead that it's it's an adult perspective okay it's, it's the nurse herself um she is the poetic voice here and she seems to rejoice straight away not only in the green world in the symbiosis between nature and the human world which she seems to revel in in that key setting in blake's work here guys on the green which again evokes growth fertility and springtime but she is happy her heart is at rest within her 
breast when everything else is still. So she observes the children playing and that inspires contentment and tranquility within her heart. Now there is a internal rhyme um, in the third line with rest and breast and I think that again just evokes the contentment of the nurse, her absolute peace because there is real harmony in the phonetic sort of radiance of this poem. Um, you can see the rhyme scheme straight away is A, B, C, B and it runs like that um, for the first two stanzas, okay, without any real changes. Um, so let's have a little look. We've got green, which is A, we've got heel, which is B, we've got steel, which is B again, and then on the third line, we've got C by itself. Um, what's the point of those four quatrains? It's a very neat poem, isn't it? Okay, the four quatrains there, A, B, C, B. Sorry, I've got to laugh because my partner's singing he knows I'm trying to film this hopefully you can't hear it um anyway um it has it has a real calm rhythmic kind of quality to it um there is internal rhymes on the first and the third lines of all the stanzas look at the second stanza as well you've got they come home my sorry then come home my children the sun is gone down and the dews of night arise come come leave off play and let us away there's another internal rhyme till the morning appears in the skies no no let us play for it is yet day and we cannot go to sleep Beside the sky, the little uh, the little birds fly, another internal rhyme, and the hills are all covered with sheep. So that's that little bit there is dialogue. That's from the children, okay? That's them imploring that the nurse allows them greater freedom in nature. They actually push the boundaries of natural authority. Because in Blake's time, we know that it was uh, parents and it was, the, you know, adults that, that dominated and, and really dominated um, over a child's life. Um, but they seek to resist using their imperative, let us play, that authority. And their immense energy there um, contrasts with the nurse's quiet contentment. But it's not a violent moment here between these figures. There is harmony between them because look at her response. Well, well, go and play till the light fades away and then go home to bed. The little ones leaped and shouted and laughed and all the hills echoed. So she allows it. She readily indulges their desire to play okay which which is a is, is a positive thing now i asked you before in the last slide is there anything here to do with god well loosely there is because if you see the nurse as a metaphor her character is a metaphor for the benevolent god the version of benevolent god the innocent vision of god then she is that Okay, she is that. She allows that view of God amongst man. There is no oppression. There are no thou shalt nots. Okay, there is none of that. There is no figure apart from nature or apart from the human world. So, you know, could that be something to do with Blake's view of God or his desire for a more benevolent idea? Um, now, of course, there are limitations here. She is largely unaware okay of the fleetingness of time of uh morality okay the idea of death or at least of the you know the children's loss of innocence and because of that guys she is a bit like the shepherd i always place her and the shepherd together because they have responsibility um for minors or for you know figures that are less powerful and yet she allows them to play until the light fades away Okay, now that could be seen as symbolic uh, for the loss of innocence, that movement into experience, and maybe she leaves them vulnerable to that. Um, but that is the same for all of the innocent poems. There is always that little shadow, that little glimmer um, of a darkness behind it. So just be aware of that in your work. Okay, I want you to pause here and have a go at these questions now, because I think you have quite a lot to work with already. Okay, so pause now. Okay, some things about the structure and the form. Let's just get these down. So we know it has four quatrains with that rhyming scheme the whole way through. Uh, the first two stanzas have the internal rhyme. 
um, and we have it to be honest mostly in the third and the fourth it's kind of half rhymes but it's there basically as well so it's calm it's rhythmic it has this kind of rolling sort of meter to it um and you can see the what it's called there um it has the each foot has two unstressed syllables followed by a stressed syllable so it's quite rolling it's quite um quite content quite free the third stanza is the child's voice and you've got the internal rhymes so again there's that kind of mimicking of the nurse they're at work with each other but okay they they resist the authoritative come come and no no okay they exchange the leave for let and the turn away into play um and then the fourth stanza the internal rhyme is in the first line uh, a little bit more strongly look play in day in the first line um because the nurse echoes the children she echoes them she follows them and there is that symbiotic relationship again okay so i'll let you pause this if you like so i'm not going to read it all out but there's some stuff there on your structure okay so whizzing through this because we do need to quickly talk about the nurse's song from experience so i'm just going to go ahead and find that that's on page 82 okay so this is the paired poem have a little look i've got another little learning start for you now okay what might the colored lexical choices be metaphors for so look at spring day and play what is this nurse talking about when she says and this is probably the most important line your spring and your day are wasted in play look at the accompanying illustration look at the difference in the colors and that is where Blake has used the metaphor for change here. Okay, so how does this sentiment that's in that phrase I've just read out from the poem, how is that a contrast to the previous nurse from Songs of Experience? So pause now. Okay, hopefully you've got some ideas because this is such an interesting poem. Okay, I absolutely love it. It's really small. Okay, but I think there's a reason for that as well and we can come back to it so here is some context that you're going to want to get down to truly understand this poem again i'm just not going to read it to you it's up on the screen but you can see in green the key key things that you definitely need to have if you're going to summarize this okay this idea that parents or adults had a certain view of children of childhood of their sort of nature and it's worth writing that down in some sort of summative way now okay so there are three things to think about but i want to read the poem now and give you some of my analysis before you do so nurse's song from experience when the voices of children are heard on the green and the whisperings are in the dale the days of my youth rise fresh in my mind and my face turns green and pale then come home my children the sun is gone down and the dews of night arise your spring and your day are wasted in play and your winter and night in disguise. Okay, I read that in a purposefully kind of spiteful, heavy tone because that's how I read it for me. So this nurse, guys, she is obviously also a quasi-parental or maternal figure, but she is highly repressive okay she is uh engaged in sinful behavior like jealousy okay we've got that absolute reference to jealousy in the fourth line my face turns green and pale okay but also look at that in the first line you've got that reference to herd on the green that's that exact parallel to the innocent poem okay but we have contrasting connotations of green here in this poem it's no longer a fertility and life it's a jealousy the poem reeks of envy okay it reeks of constraint and it's that view of experience when experience seeks to dominate and consume innocence as if it is the only thing okay notice that she des she describes the voices of the children playing as whisperings as well it sounds like they're engaged in in illicit activity it sounds like they have a secret source of fun that she feels like she's not a part of um 
So a real kind of recalling of her state of innocence and her state of childhood that she feels she can't indulge in anymore. Okay, she's jealous. Okay, this is the, the voice of a sick, corrupted mind, like the one in a sick rose. Okay, not a benevolent one. Okay, this is the vision of a, of a god, of an authority figure that is malevolent, that is thou shalt not. Okay, so she calls them home and look how quickly the, the poem ends. Where is the voice of the children? It's absent, it's not here. Okay, and that is telling in itself. Okay, she says the sun is gone down. The sun going down could be symbolic, of course, of the sending shadows of experience, of the end to innocence. Okay, the night arise and that line, your spring and your day are wasted in play. Okay, day and play, we have the internal rhyming, rhyming kind of moment there, but it's completely different. It speaks of finality. It speaks of end okay and that is really important full of spite okay contrasting the sentiment in the previous poem okay so remembering in blake's era okay there was a lot of debate around childhood and their nature um are they born free and good like jean-jacques rousseau pioneered or are they born as these kind of depraved uh, sinful figures that must burn away their sin through life very calvinistic kind of christian idea um so the authority here okay is is one of society it's based on this external uh figure um it's of laws and it's of binding and it's a huge binding possessiveness in this poem okay there is no joy to be found so really really key love this poem love its contrast love it as a pair all right have a pause have a go at these activities now give yourself about 10 minutes write yourself a couple of short paragraphs okay here is some stuff on structure again i'm not going to write it out for you you can pause the video here as well get some ideas down now before you go i want to leave you with this question because this is what really has been uh sort of reached for here and that is this does growing up then for children in blake's time for children now mean the inevitable loss of innocence is that what he's he's telling us or is that what society forced to happen okay is adulthood like the vision of the nursing experience is it marked or is it tainted always by dishonesty and duplicity okay where does it come from does it have to be that way have a little think i hope this has been helpful for you guys um if you've got any questions again leave them in the comments below and i'll be happy to help as ever keep yourself safe lots of love